Good morning, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, Director Nichols, and our distinguished guest. I am Amy Crawford, North Area Engineer for the Northeast District, and I'm here this morning to introduce to you Mrs. Andrea Andy Jackson. Andy is semi-retired, but take that with a grain of salt because she is not retired at all, um, following a 20-year career with A.T. Steele University. She and her husband, Bob, have owned and operated a farm for 45 years in southern Adair County near La Plata, to which they added an agritourism business in 2008. She is very active in her local and statewide boards, including serving as the chair of Missouri Farm Bureau's Ag Tourism Committee. Andy is here today to present to you the concerns of maintaining the pavements on our supplementary system and the importance of these routes to the agricultural industry and to the small communities located in these areas. Please welcome with me, Ms. Andy Jackson. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I'm extremely uh, uh, pleased to be able to, uh, to talk with you. I thank the commissioner, uh, the overall commission, for allowing me to speak. So today, I invite you to bring your mind and come with me and sit in my 1996 Dodge Dooley truck. We're going to sit on a beautiful harvest fall day in October. And we're parked at the intersection of Mercury Avenue County Road and 156 East, east of La Plata. Feature yourselves there. We're just watching the traffic. And these are some of the vehicles that you and I are going to see traveling on the supplemental road, 156. Here comes Drew Locke. He's driving his 70-foot semi transporting soybeans from his farm field near La Plata to the ADM ele uh, elevator at Novelty. From there, those beans would go on to Quincy, to the barges, and on down the river. During harvest, Drew will make approximately 200 trips, 25 to 30 miles one way, transporting corn and soybeans. Now we see a large semi heading west. It's hauling rock from the area quarry. This particular rock truck may make mm, 8 to 10 trips a day to and from the quarry because it's transporting rock to be spread on one of the many uh, county gravel roads in our area. So both drivers are going to use a great deal of caution as they meet because there's no shoulders on this 156 and they share the road. Soon we see a gooseneck trailer. It's loaded with cattle pulled by a three-quarter ton heavy-duty pickup and their destination is Lolly Brothers at Macon. They're going to the sale barn. Here comes two loaded MFA feed trucks. They're headed east to deliver supplies to a local swine operation. Intermittently, there's several cars then that are going east as well as west, and these are the rural residents that travel to or from their work in the area towns. Soon, we see a potload of 300-pound dairy calves that have been fed by the Amish family. These calves are being transported to an out-of-state feedlot. And pretty soon, we see that Amish horse and buggy. Mr. and Mrs. Bontrugger, they're going down the road. They're going to La Plata to the local CNR, and they're going to get their groceries, and they're going to the La Plata Lumberyard for supplies. We also see a 10-wheeler transporting feed from the Chin feed mill that's located at Clarence, and they're taking their feed to a swine facility that's east of La Plata. Here comes Doug Thomas. He's taking a semi-load of corn to Macon to the ethanol plant. He's filling a contract. And look, oh my gosh, there's Doug Clarkson, and he's got his combine, and he's followed by a pickup truck that's pulling a trailer, and it's got his bean head on the back of it. He's moving from farm to farm during this harvest season, he's using our supplemental highway. So we're sitting in the truck, you and I, and we are talking, and I'm explaining to you that you're frequently going to see tractors and tillage machinery and grain buggies and agricultural equipment. They all travel this road. And they're moving from farm to farm as the production of row crops is a vital part of our community. As we're sitting in my truck, I explain to you that in the spring, 
you would see the seasonal fertilizer carts and the tank wagons that are, that are transporting anhydrous ammonia. And those are going from the supply depots to the fields. So you and I continue to observe this flow of our rural citizens traveling to work and home. We also see a school bus delivering our students home from the area schools. We see those teenage drivers that are returning home after ball practice. And we also see some bicyclists that, uh, that enjoy the, the scenic routes of our supplemental road system. So we're having this conversation and you and I discuss our concerns of safety and the need for shoulders on the supplemental road system. So as we sit and observe this traffic for a short period of time on this sunny fall afternoon, hopefully you all will see and have a clear picture of real people and the important role that these roads play in our agricultural industry and in the lives of the people who live in our rural areas. So now I have some messages from some of our elected officials that I would like to share with you. Our Adair County Commissioners, Kirksville is the county seat, Adair County Commissioners Mark Thompson, Stan Pickens, Carson Adams, they asked me to express their concern to the Commission that as you deal with challenges of funding the maintenance of these secondary roads, that they suggest that the responsibility of maintenance of these supplementary, supplementary roads remain with the Missouri Department of Transportation and should not be passed on to the local county level, as of course the county funds are limited. The county funds are used to provide rock for the county rock roads and bridge repair and maintenance. In addition, they ask me to convey to you that the process of BRO federal funding that comes to the state continue to be transferred onto the counties and not be withheld at the state level. I'm only a, a messenger of the statement. This past week, Representative Nate Walker and Representative Craig Redman delivered the State of the District Address at the Kirksville Area Chamber of Commerce gathering. Regarding the transportation issue, they assure the attendees at this gathering that the lawmakers are currently trying to think outside the box to find funding possibilities for the Missouri Department of Transportation and they assure that funding will be a number one priority for the legislature. As you mentioned this morning, some progress is already being done in that direction. So in closing, I, I wish to just let you know that last week I was privileged to travel to Washington, D.C. as well with members of our Missouri uh, Farm Bureau Resolutions Committee. There were county presidents, young farmers, Farm Bureau staff as well. We had wonderful meetings. We had meetings and meaningful discussions of agricultural issues with Congressman Mike Conaway of Texas, uh, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, Congressman Colin Peterson of Minnesota, and of course our own Senator Roy Blunt. In addition, we had a wonderful breakfast. Breakfast meeting with six of our uh, Missouri congressional representatives. Our own sixth district congressman, Sam Graves serves on the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, and he's chairman of the, of the House side, House Subcommittee on Highways and Transit. He brought with him as his guest to our breakfast meeting his colleague, Congressman Bill Schuster of Pennsylvania. It was meaningful because Congressman Schuster is serving his second term as chairman of this overall House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. It's one of the largest committees in Congress with broad jurisdiction over all modes of transportation, including aviation, maritime, waterborne uh, transportation, highways, bridges, mass transit, and railroads. Congressman Schuster told us he has focused on improving our infrastructure since his first days in Congress, and he assured us that he and our Congressman Sam Draves are working diligently on long-term transportation plan that should be in place in five years. So that's the latest that I bring from Washington, in addition to what you have said. Our Washington friends and leaders. So I allow, I'm so appreciative that you have allowed me to speak to you. I share all this information simply to substantiate the facts that the Missouri Supplementary Road System is a vital part of the, com of the economy. The Supplementary Road System is an essential 
component of the agricultural industry, as Mr. Waters and I both would relate and know. This is not new information to you, but I am a messenger delivering the reminder that the production of food and the production of fiber and the production of fuel is essential to sustain and to enhance our human life. Thank you very much, gentlemen.